So in this video, we are going to look at thermal analysis. So to have a bit of a background, uh, why do we perform thermal analysis? So thermal analysis is performed to check the effect of thermal loads on body. So then what are thermal loads? So thermal loads are loads which are basically created when there is a transfer of thermal energy from one place to another. So there are three ways in which thermal energy can be transferred, uh, namely conduction, convection and radiation. So the first two out of these, uh, conduction and convection, require a medium for transfer of the thermal energy. So conduction basically uses uh, solid, solids as a medium for transfer and convection uses fluids, uh, that is liquid and gases. And then radiation, it doesn't require any medium as such electromagnetic radiation. So in this tutorial we are going to use conduction. So as you can see I have a meshed model of a beam here already. Okay. So to I have meshed this beam uh, using H elements. Okay. So if you want to know the details about the dimensions of this beam and the dimension of the H element used here. You can just go to my blog post uh, on thermal analysis, which I have given in the description. I have all asked in the comments to check the details. And if you want a step by step process uh, of this tutorial, you can again go through my blog. Okay. So we have a meshed model of a beam here, meshed with its element. So now we have to create a suitable material perform the analysis. So to create that you can go to this white browser area and then right click here and go to create and then materials. Okay. So I have already created the material here as you can see I have named it iron. So the card image for this material will be MAT4 okay which is used for thermal analysis purposes. So MAT4 will be the card image of the material. Then we have to input the thermal conductivity and heat capacity and density values for the material okay i have already put the values here if you want to see the values you can again visit my blog post which will be in the description as well as in the comments then we have to create a solid property for the uh, beam right so i have created a solid property here again as you can see the card image is still solid so again to create a property you can just right click on this browser area and create a property okay so post creation of this material and property we have to just assign this material and property to the mesh model which is solid meshing so as you can see here i have already assigned the solid property and the material here property solid property and material iron okay so now we'll go and assign the boundary conditions to this mesh model so to assign the boundary conditions, first what we'll do basically is we'll apply a flux load on the face of this beam and uh, we'll fix the temperature of the exactly opposing face on the beam. Okay. So basically we are going to apply flux load on this square face here and we're going to constrain uh, the temperature of this square face exactly on the opposite side. So, to create a temperature constraint, we just go ahead and right click on this white browser area, area and go to create and then we'll go to node collector. Okay. So, we we'll name this node collector as temperature constraint. We'll change the color of this node collector. Change it to yellow, suppose. Okay. So we'll apply the temperature constraint on this uh, square face here. So to do that, we can go to analysis and then we can go to constraint. Okay. Then we we'll go to create and we'll select faces here. You can see we'll selected faces here. Okay. And we can select this square face here. Okay. Uh, then we'll Uncheck all the degrees of freedom here, okay, and then we'll go to create an input. Okay, so when you click 
click on create and edit uh, window like this opens here so under d so basically what is d d is the temperature constraint which we will uh, apply here so under d we will uh, need the temperature as 50 okay and then we will go to return okay so the temperature constraint is created here so the d there was the temperature constraint whose value we have put as 80 okay now we have applied the temperature constraint on this phase now we will apply the flux load on the other phase okay. so to apply the flux load uh, we first have to create a certain group of elements through which the flux load can be applied okay uh, so for that we uh, will just uh, right click on this white browser area again and go to create and then we will go to groups okay so we will go to groups and we will create a new group here and we will name this group as construction group okay okay so we will basically name this uh, group as conduction group and under this email uh, group, we will select the elements with, on which uh, this flux load will be applied. Okay? So, as you can see here, uh, conduction group, the card image here is conduction. So, if we want to create a group for convection elements, we can just click on this card image and go to convection here. As you can see here, we select this, it will become convection. Okay? But, but we are performing convection, so we will change it again to convection. Okay, so card image is conduction. Now we will select the elements for this. Okay, so we can go and click on elements. Okay, so basically, I will select the faces here. Okay, as shell faces, solid, solid face. Okay, so we have got the solid face here. We have selected the solid face and then we click on. And so we are basically these elements are added. As you can see here, these elements are added. Change the color just in case. So we will make this green color. So as you can see, these elements are added to the group. Okay. So now we'll apply the flux load. So to apply the flux load, we will we will create one more load collector. We just right click on this load collector and click on create. So we name this load collector as flux load. Okay. So just change the color just in case and make it something such as red. Okay. So okay. So we have changed the color color of this flux load load collector. Okay. So apply the flux load, we will again go to analysis and we have to go to flux, okay. Then as you can see, we have to select the elements here, right. So we will click on elements and then we will go and select white collector, okay. Then we will go and click the drop down here and we will select groups, okay. So as you can see, conduction group comes here, so we can just select the conduction group here and click on select. Okay, so as you can see, the conduction group elements are selected here. Okay, so the value of the heat flux will keep it as 0.6. Okay, and the load type will be Q body 1. Fine, then we we'll click on create and the load, thermal load, flux load will be created. Okay, so we have a mesh model, we have applied the material property. Uh, we have created the uh, boundary conditions by creating the temperature constraint on one phase and creating flux load on the other phase. Okay, so after this, we have to create the load step. So, load step was already created here. Okay, so when we go down here, this is a load step which you can again create by going to the white browser region by clicking there and so going to create and uh, load step okay so we will change the analysis type to heat transfer okay 
So this will be a steady state analysis. Fine. So then we have to select the SPC. The SPC will basically be the temperature constant here. Okay. Okay, then we have to select the load. So load basically the flux load here. Okay. So we have matched the model, we have the material, material and property in place. Uh, we have the boundary conditions in place. Okay. Now after this uh, to ensure that we get our results out, we have to create a global output request card. Okay. So that can be done by going to analysis, control cards. Okay. And uh, next and you can see here we have a global output request okay so under this i have selected psa flux and thermal for output okay so okay we are selecting these three for output results now we have everything in place so now we will be running the solver so we will be using the optistrut solver for this tutorial Okay, so then you can go to analysis, optistrut. Okay, go to options, product option analysis. Okay, name is there. So we'll just click on optistrut and then we'll click on yes. So as you can see here, a uh, wide uh, window will appear here. Once you run the OptiStrip solver, uh, and this here will be the message log, and it will display if the analysis is completed. And as you can see, here, the analysis is completed. Okay, so next we will view the results. Okay, so once you click the results button, a hyperview window like this will open. Okay, so as you can see here. We will no result is displayed here. The whole beam is in blue color for element fluxes. Okay, so then we we'll just change this to click temperatures and we'll click on apply. Okay, so after clicking apply, as you can see here, uh, one end of the beam is blue and one end is red. So if you go to the legend here, you can see uh, this blue color end. Its temperature is at 18 degree and uh, other end, its temperature is at 24 degree, and the temperature in between these two ends, it's varying between these two. So basically, this is how you can perform uh, thermal analysis uh, on a beam. Okay. So this is a very basic kind of thermal analysis in which you basically learn how to apply the flux load, how to apply the temperature constraint, and how to select the elements on which the flux load will be applied. So you can just uh, think of more cases for applying this, for performing this thermal analysis and you can just play around with it. And if you have any doubt, you can just uh, ping me in the comments, I'll reply. And you can check my blog post as well uh, if you have any doubt on the process the detailed description of the process in my blog post as well as you can check my other blog post uh, on my website uh, so this is all for this tutorial uh, hope you got to learn something new from this tutorial so don't forget to follow my facebook and instagram page and my blog so see you all in the next video thank you